Well, this is Bishop R.J. Edwards, and it's indeed a pleasure to be back with you on this radio station. I know that you're going through your tests and your trials at this time when COVID-19, the master plague, is on the land. I want you to know that God will lift you up, turn your life around in spite of what we see. God is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Stay tuned as I go to church. We have been preaching the word of God. Your axe head is going to swim again. In this passage of scripture taken from the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, there are loads of information as it relates to this generation, as it relates to the 21st century people. It has been hidden in scripture and I want to release what God has delved in my spirit so that somebody will glean from the word of God and the word will become strong in our lives on today because there are people who have lost their connectivity with God because you see in that particular passage of scripture it has to do with an ox head that was connected to an ox stick. So it is showing us that in this age and this time, there are some people who have lost their cutting edge, people who are not sharp as they used to be. There are people in the kingdom who have become ineffective. Their prayer life is nowhere. Their worship is far from God. There are people here who have lost their way and have drifted from God. That's what has been happening with COVID. It has pushed some people away from God. But a God sets me on here today as a pastor to bring back people in alignment with God. My job is to help people to be realigned. And so the first thing I try to do is to have my life realigned. My life must line up with God for me to line up other people. I have to make sure that my life is lined up with God. So I want you to know that from time to time, I have to take my car to the alignment shop. And why do I take my car to the alignment shop? It's simple because the car is out of alignment. Sometimes my car would shift and drift to the left or it would drift to the right depends on which side of my car is out of alignment and I had to take it to the alignment shop and tell the alignment man that he has to align it and so the first thing that he did is that he put the car on a mount and he mount up that car and the next thing he lift the car wheels off the ground and set some lights in place and then all of a sudden I saw when he went underneath the car and then he now tried to pull some stuff and and strengthen some stuff and make sure that the car is aligned see there are some of us because of the times that we're living in it's bumpy you know, they said bumper roads cause cars to, to come out of alignment. Potholes, there are some potholes in our lives and in our pathway that causes our cars to shift out of alignment. But I noticed after he has fixed my alignment and I hit the highway, the car drives better. I save on gas and my ride becomes more smooth. I want to tell somebody on today that today is your realignment day. Let's go down to Jordan's River. 
to learn a few things. Right there at the brink of the river, you'll find two different generations. The older generation is represented by the prophet and the younger generation is represented by the sons of the prophet. God so strategically allow the older generation to be mixed with the younger generation at the brink of a Jordan. You see, God so structured it to teach this 21st century generation about a few things that I want to open to our understanding. You see, it was the young prophets who asked the older prophet to come along. Don't let us be by ourselves now. You see, the problem is that young people wants to be by themselves because they understand the language of each other. But when they are by themselves, they cannot glean from people who are experienced. And that's the problem that we're having. The young is teaching the young. And if the young keeps teaching the young, then the young cannot learn from the older ones. So let's go down to Jordan River and see the two generations that were there. Let's see what God would input into our spirit. Let's read the scripture. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 1 to 3. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, Behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan and, and take thence every man a beam and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, go ye. Verse 3. And one said, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. But there are some things that jump from the scripture in my face. That while I sat at my table, the Lord was giving me some revelations as it relates to this passage of scripture. The first thing that jumped at me is this. The young prophets wanted an expansion. The young people wanted an increase. The young people who were with him wanted something to advance to their next level. But in, in the midst of their wanting an increase, it's in the midst of their who wanted an expansion that the source of their strength disappeared. Oh God, I don't know who is not faced with some trials and some tribulations now. I don't know who is here right now who wants an expansion, wants an increase, wants to spread your wings, but all of a sudden there's a cut in power. I don't know who is here right now who wanted to increase in God but a force has come up against you in trying to stop you. I don't know who I'm talking to who in the middle of your increase came a force up against you in trying to block your movement but I come by to tell somebody that I your river Jordan God is giving you some lessons that you will learn that God is with you though you're passing through a lack in your life though you're passing through a struggles he says I will go says the prophet I will go it is his word that declares I will be with you always even to the end of the earth I will be with you so therefore you're at the point of 
your increase. You're at the point of your expansion. You have lost the source of your strength. But God says, I am with you. Don't be dismayed. The second thing I notice about the passage is when they wanted to move from where they are. I don't know how many people are today wanting to move from where you are. You went on by the river Jordan to, to get the material to move from where you are. You, you entered a church to get some strength to move from where you are. But all of a sudden you discovered that while you wanted to move something just didn't want to move with you. Hell stepped in and blocked your movement. I wonder if there's somebody who is listening to me. You, you really want to move, but hell telling you, you're not moving. You're tired of the kind of lifestyle that you live. You're, you're tired of the bondage that is in your way. You're tired of the lust and the greed. And you want to move, but all of a sudden hell comes up and tells you that you're not moving. You're at your Jordan and you want to move, but something left you. The third thing I noticed is that when their ambition was intact, they wanted to grow. Their ambition was intact. I love ambitious people who their dreams and their aspiration is so strong and God blessed them with visions and, and dreams but, and all of a sudden hell just stepped in and want to stop you. I come by to tell you that you are unstoppable. I don't care what hell is trying to say against you. Your ambition took you to university. Your ambition took took you to college your ambition took you to go and do your driving lesson your ambition took you to go and, and seek somebody to marry and then all of a sudden hell break loose your, your Jordan is standing before you I come back to tell you that you are unstoppable if you need this message now text me now at 37803 a2. That's right. Text, not call. Text 37803A2. The mark of the beast is on us. I have the book that I'm promoting. The book that says, Say No to That Mark by Pastor Leighton D. Smith. Hear me. Every one of you need to get this book. Leighton Smith was a good friend of mine, and he wrote this book. Look at some of the other topics that are in the book. The emergence of the one world government, the European Union, secret organizations promoting the new world order, the coming caste society, the century of the chip, the significance of numbers in the Bible. Don't compromise. Say no to the Mark book is now available at Source of Light, and that's at Hagley Park Plaza in Halfway Tree, or can be picked up at the Lighthouse Assembly Church Office, One Garbally Drive, Spanish Town. Just text the numbers 3780382, and we'll give you directions. God bless you. The fourth thing I notice in the passage is that. It's while they are chopping. It's while some people are swinging their axe. It's while some people are chopping that the enemy steps in. You know, there are some people in church who you're lifting your hands and you're praising God and all of a sudden hell steps into your home and calls up your children to move away from the position. The enemy stepped in. Come, you know that it's while you're praising God, while you're lifting your hands, while you're speaking in tongues, that the powers of hell just went and come up against you to disrupt your future. But can I tell somebody, keep on praying. Keep on lifting up your hands. Sickness and disease 
walked in your river Jordan, stepped over and, and made up its mind that you're not going forward. But I come back to tell somebody on today that God is with you. You're at your Jordan, my sister. But God is with you. My brother, you're at your Jordan. God is with you. At your workplace trying to survive and hell don't want you to survive. But I'm here to tell you, I don't care what your Jordan is trying to do to you. I'm here to tell you that God is with you. The next thing I noticed is that the axe head fell in Jordan's murky water. You see, God allowed the axe head to fall into that murky water. They couldn't see it. I've been to Jordan myself. I was baptized in Jordan. You can't see the bottom of the water. Some of you, you've lost your stuff and you don't see it. Can't see it no more. Hmm. Ah, it's not in your reach. It's not... You can't, you can't, some of you can't swim, you can't dive, you, you, you can't see what you really lost, but I come by to tell you, I don't care how murky the water is, I don't care how bad your Jordan is, I sense that somebody is going to get back your stuff, your axe head is going to swim again, lift up your hands and praise God where you are. There is a mystery that is in Jordan. I call Jordan a mystery river. Some of you are having some mystery experience. Your mystery Jordan is rolling with your stuff. See, Jordan is a mystery because of what happened there. Because see, the word of God tells me in the book of Joshua that this Jordan tries to block the children of Israel. Therefore, fathers, this Jordan try to block your mama and your papa, but under the leadership of Joshua. Joshua, as God commanded him to get 12 of the Levites and, and let them stand in the water the Levites were to stand in the water and when they stand in the water with the ark of the covenant on their shoulder Jordan had to respect them I don't know who is at your Jordan come on I don't know I don't know who is at your Jordan but God would have allowed Elijah to be there because he would have remembered uh, that they, they tried to stop the children of Israel from moving forward but God through his infinite power I don't know what he did at that time but he caused the feet of those Levites to step into it and then Jordan had to back up now your feet is dangerous but I'm going to teach you a few more things on today because God is helping somebody to understand that whatever is coming up against you, whatever the enemy has plotted against you, he had already given you the victory. See, while Jordan was roaring, remember in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 11, that God had already told Joshua, get up now my son with all of your people and cross over this Jordan. In other words, God was saying to Joshua, I have given you a prophetic word. In other words, when you are at your Jordan, you got a prophetic word over your head. It might look bad, smell bad, murky, but prophecy is over you and if you got prophecy over your head you shall not die you shall live and you shall declare the works of the Lord your God somebody open your mouth up and shout your hallelujah I don't know who I'm talking to but you got prophecy God already told you to get across it God told you a long time to cross it it's there God told Joshua said you're crossing it he had already prophesied you're, you're crossing your Jordan but the next thing that I notice that this same Jordan overspread its banks. Jordan's always overflowing 
it spunks. When your parents were fixing to cross it, it overflow its banks. I don't know whose rivers is overflowing its banks. Trouble after trouble, trials after trial, but don't mind it. God says to tell you, you're crossing it. God says to tell you, everything is okay. God says to tell you, I don't know who I'm talking to. Hell is breaking loose in your yard. Hell has come up against your house. Hell has come up against your family. But I come by to tell you that your Jordan is overflowing its banks. But oh, God says to tell you that God, that you're not going to die in this scenario. That thing will not kill you. Your head is anointed with oil and your cup is running over can somebody open your mouth loudly and shout a hallelujah I sense something is about to break woman can you praise God with me Jordan is overflowing its bank Jordan is swelling speaks of your problems that are swelling you go to the doctor and the doctor told you that you're crippled you won't live. You, you went to the doctor and the doctor said you have high blood pressure and it can give you a stroke. You went to the doctor and the doctor said your spinal cord is damaged. But I don't know what your Jordan is saying to you on today. It could be swelling and overflowing. It's banks, but God is with you. The God of Jacob. He is your refuge. You're connected to God. So your Jordan must respect you. I wonder if somebody could give God a few minutes of praise. Give him a praise break at your Jordan. Give him a praise break. Open your mouth and lift your voice and shout your hallelujah. You must also remember that it was when Elijah wanted to go to his next level. He wanted to have a closer experience with God. Because when he was going to hear the, the small wind, it was when the whirlwind was about to come that would take him up to glory that he had to take his, uh, his mantle and smite River Jordan. Jordan had to respect him because he had a mantle. Some of you don't know that the Holy Ghost is your mantle in these last days. But let me move on a little bit. Some of you don't understand that it was when Elijah went up, he dropped the mantle and Elijah picked it up on his way back to do some more miracles. Jordan was still standing in his way, but he had to slap it with the mantle. If you need this message now, Text me now at 378-0382. That's right. Text, not call. Text 378-0382. This is Bishop R.J. Edwards stopping by to let you know that God is with you. In spite of all the challenges that we're faced with as a nation, in spite of all the economic downturns, in spite of all the physical challenges with COVID, I'm here to let you know that our God is with us. Just to also advise you that we're not having face-to-face -face church. We are on Zoom, Facebook, and on YouTube for our Sunday morning service. We have 9 a.m. service every Sunday morning. And also, we are on Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom every morning of the week for our prayer meeting. Please join us, Bishop Rowan Edwards Ministry page. It is always glorious. We start our prayer meeting 6 a.m. every morning, and I'm looking forward to see you. The mark of the beast is on us. I have the book that I'm promoting. The book that says, Say No to That Mark by Pastor Leighton D. Smith. Hear me. Every one of you need to get this book. Leighton Smith was a good friend of mine. And he wrote this book. 
look at some of the other topics that are in the book. The emergence of the one world government, the European Union, secret organizations promoting the new world order, the coming caste society, the century of the chip, the significance of numbers in the Bible. Don't compromise. Say No to the Mark book is now available at Source of Light, and that's at Hagley Park Plaza in Halfway Tree, or can be picked up at the Lighthouse Assembly Church Office, One Garbally Drive, Spanish Town. Just text the numbers 3780382, and we'll give you directions. God bless you. at 6 a.m. I am on Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. Come to my YouTube page at Bishop Rowan Edwards Ministry. That's Bishop R-O-W-A-N Ministry. Big things are happening in our prayer meeting. People from around the world come together every morning at 6 a.m. Please join me. YouTube, Facebook, and Zoom. Bishop Rowan Edwards Ministry. Just go find that page now, R-O-W-A-N, Bishop Rowan Edwards Ministry page. Please, I'm waiting to see you on one of these pages. This is Bishop R.J. Edwards saying goodbye. I'm checking out now.